And this week's parasha, parashat Nitzavim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu talks to us again through Moshe Rabbeinu and says to us, Atem Nitzavim ayom kulchem lifnei Adonai Eloichem. Rashechem, Shiftechem, Ziknechem, Shotrechem, Kol Ish Yisrael. You are standing today, all of you, before Hashem, your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders, your officers, all the men of Israel, your small children, your women, your converts, who's in your midst of the, your camp, from the hewer of your wood to the drawer of your water. In so many words, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, I'm talking to all of you. Not just this one, not just that one, but all of you. Now, in case people think like the heretics of the world, where they say, yeah, this is only Hashem commanding Am Yisrael to follow the commandments in Eretz Yisrael, it's just that generation, you know, it's not really relevant to us. Lo itchem levatchem anuchi koret et abrit azot, ve'et ala azot. כי את אשר ישנו פה עמנו עומד היום לפני אדוני אלוהינו ואת אשר איננו פה עמנו היום. קדוש ברוך הוא, make sure that we understand clearly, without even using commentary, that this is not just for the generation of משה רבנו, דור הדעה, but rather all of us today. Not with you alone do I seal this covenant and this imprecation. But with whoever is here standing with us today before Hashem our God and with whoever is not here with us today. So here we see that everything that is said in this Torah, this entire covenant, is for all of us. And then Moshe Rabbeinu starts prophesizing, telling us all types of things that all generations will have to deal with. And interestingly enough, he tells us about the different pitfalls that we'll all have to deal with, which all have a single solution, a requirement that most people either never learned, or even if they did, simply are not willing to do it. And that's Mesirut Nefesh. Moshe Rabbeinu prophesizes and tells us of what's going to happen to us in the future. Different obstacles we're going to have to deal with. What kind of obstacles? He says to us, for you know how we dwelled in the land of Egypt and how we passed through the midst of the nations through whom you passed and you saw their abominations and their detestable idols of wood and stone of silver and gold that were with them. He's telling us what we saw so we know what is going to be in the future because there's no purpose of telling us about things that happened in the past if this is not something we're ever going to have to deal with again. There are different things that happened in the past but are not mentioned in the literal Torah because we don't necessarily have to deal with them. In fact, the Gemara Masechet Megillah says that Am Yisrael had over 1.2 million prophets throughout the generations, yet only 55 are mentioned in the Tanakh. 48 men and 7 women. Why are only 55 out of 1.2 million mentioned? Because while all prophets that prophesied said things that were important said things that were the word of god said things that could have meant life or death only the 55 that had each word that they said calculated in heaven to the extent where kadosh Baruch Hu decided that that word that prophecy will matter to every single generation from that moment on. Meaning that everything that is written in the Tanakh, says the Gemara in Masechet Megillah, 
everything that's mentioned in the Tanakh is by those one of those 55 prophets and therefore everything that is mentioned in the Tanakh total of 24 books five books of Moses and then 19 other books everything in that Tanakh is relevant to every single generation needless to say the generation before Mashiach where we are every verse every paragraph every prophet is somehow connected to us today and here it's of course the highest level of prophecy was Moshe Rabbeinu's and he's telling us that remember the past we saw these idolaters that Hashem allowed them to capture us, to have us as as their slaves, despite their abominations. What were their abominations? Wood, stone, silver, gold. But yet, it's not necessarily just a problem that they were an abomination, but rather the fact that despite their abomination, Hashem allowed them to have us as slaves. Why would Hashem allow the idol worshippers to enslave to torture to kill his firstborn child am Israel. why because despite the fact that they were idolaters you fell for the trap and became idolaters too and therefore you need to know dear children that it's not just the past that we have to worry about and not just the future but in the present today about to start off the year 5782 secular calendar Gregorian calendar 2021 is almost complete right now you have the very same problems that we had 3333 years ago before Kadosh Baruch Hu released us from slavery slavery of the idol worshipers what was the slavery wood stone silver and gold how is it related today wood could easily be an indication of the Christian cross stone is one of the statues that people like to have in their in their houses of Buddha or some other type of forbidden form of a statue or could it be Islam second biggest religion in the world silver also means kesef means money the idolatry of money gold is also not just money but also honor people looking for honor people looking for attention they want to build a building to build themselves a name says the Rabbi Chaimi Volozin generation before Mashiach will have a different and unique Erev Rav some of which will be religious Jews or at least they seem religious that build institutions just for the sake of their own name that's all they built the Steve Smith synagogue obviously I don't believe there's such a synagogue but all types of names they'll put I even saw one time a building campaign for yeshiva where they actually have the 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 uh the uh, message you know the motto of this campaign to raise several million dollars for this building what was the motto of the game build yourself a name just like the tower of babel unbelievable but here they're trying they're saying that they're going to build themselves a name by building a house of Torah maybe they should learn Torah first but so a lot of people will chase false religions a lot of people will chase false ideologies kavod all types of things this is all different types of Abu Dazara Abu Dazara literally means serving something else something foreign something that's not God 